Today, I want to show off a clever divide and conquer algorithm for multiplying integers. Upon hearing that, you might well ask, what the heck do we need that for? Most of the time in computer science, we think of multiplication as a constant time operation. And as long as the numbers that we're multiplying are small enough to fit in the bit width of our CPU, that's a good assumption. But sometimes we might want to multiply very, very large numbers. Think millions of bits. For such large numbers, we can't rely on our 64-bit CPUs to perform the multiplication for us. We have to write an algorithm that will produce the bits of the output number. But even so, you might find the idea of a divide and conquer algorithm silly, because you already know an algorithm for multiplication. Specifically, when you learned to do long multiplication in grade school, whether it was called that or not, you learned an algorithm. So as a starting point, we could think about the computational complexity of the algorithm that we do to multiply numbers by hand. And then if we're going to implement some clever recursive algorithm, it had better outperform the basics that we all learned as kids. To think about the running time of long multiplication, let's do an example in both decimal and binary. When we do long multiplication in decimal, we can think of it as looping through the digits of the bottom number to produce each row, and then an inner loop through the digits of the top number to produce the columns, and then we have to add up those partial products to get our result. In binary, we can do exactly the same thing, except that multiplying a digit at a time is really easy, because if we're multiplying by one, we just copy the top number down, and if we're multiplying by zero, we can skip that row altogether. And then again, we have to sum up the partial products. If we think about what it would look like to perform this operation on really big numbers, the number of rows we have to add up is equal to the number of ones in the bottom number. So if n is the number of bits in our input numbers, then we have big O of n rows, and we produce a 2n bit output. And in total, we're adding up big O of n squared digits. So if we're going to devise a divide and conquer algorithm for this problem, it had better run faster than big O of n squared. Of note, when we talk about n here, we are referring to the number of bits that it takes to represent the number. And that is very different from the magnitude of the number itself. Remember, with n bits, we can represent values up to 2 to the n, and so the number of bits is the log base 2 of the values that we are multiplying. For example, the log base 2 of 645 rounds up to 10, and so when we're multiplying 645, n is not 645, n is 10. So, let's think about how we can do multiplication using divide and conquer. In a divide and conquer algorithm, we want to split into smaller subproblems, solve those subproblems recursively, and then reassemble the solution. So let's try splitting our binary values in half, and think about what we can get if we recurse on integers with half as many bits. If we split our inputs x and y in half, we end up with the high order bits of x and the low order bits of x that we'll call xh and xl respectively, and we also split y into yh and yl. And so we can think about those as distinct binary numbers.
And if our goal is to eventually recombine into a solution to x times y, we should express x and y in terms of these subcomponents. With our 5-bit numbers representing the high-order and low-order bits, we can reconstruct x by adding together xl plus 2 to the n over 2 times xh. When we multiply by 2 to the n over 2 in binary, we are just shifting xh to the left by n over 2 bits. And so in this case, that would add five zeros to the end of xh. And then when we add in xl, that will add to those five new zeros and will reconstruct all 10 digits of x. And so then we can express our desired output x times y in terms of these representations that use xh, xl, yh, and yl. So as we've expressed the multiplication here, we still have an n-bit number times an n-bit number, but if we distribute the multiplication over the addition here, we will get multiplication between numbers that are only n over 2 bits. And at this point, we've expressed x times y in terms of a bunch of multiplication operations that each operate on only n over 2 bit numbers. So if we compute these smaller multiplications recursively, then we just have to add up the results along with some bit shifts to get the value of x times y. That means we have a divide-and-conquer algorithm, so let's write down the recursive pseudocode. So our multiply and conquer function calls itself recursively on each pair of high or low order bits from x and high or low order bits from y. And then having saved those multiplication results, we can calculate exactly this formula for x times y and return it. I've written our recursion so that the base case happens when we get to a one bit number, but we could just as easily have had the recursion stop as soon as the number of bits was small enough to fit into our CPU's arithmetic circuitry and ask it to do the last steps of the multiplication for us. That would correspond to x and y both having 32 or fewer bits if we're on a 64-bit computer because the output size of 2n bits needs to fit into our 64-bit registers. But whether we use 1 or 32 as the base case is not going to change the eventual big O analysis. And so our next task is to figure out the running time of this recursive algorithm. When we're in the base case, we'll do a constant time operation to multiply these numbers with few bits. The rest of the time we're in the recursive case, where it takes us linear time to split x and y. And then we make recursive calls on inputs of size n over 2. Finally, we do some addition to produce x times y, 
and we also have to do some bit shifts. When we multiply by 2 to the n, or 2 to the n over 2, we do that by shifting the value to the left by that many bits. Overall then, this line performs 2 bit shifts and 3 additions, and in total that's a linear amount of work with respect to n. So our recurrence, when we're not in the base case, has four subproblems, each of size n over 2, plus a total of linear work to split and then recombine our subproblems. But this is exactly the sort of recurrence we solved last time. And last time we found that the general solution for this type of recurrence was big O of n to the log base b of a. In this case, b is 2 and a is 4, so we get big O of n to the log base 2 of 4, which is big O of n squared, and so we've failed to beat our grade school multiplication algorithm. But luckily, this isn't the end of the story, and here's where the clever part of the algorithm comes in. We can do some algebra to come up with a different way of expressing this x times y multiplication that will require fewer recursive calls and therefore give us a better big O bound. To make our recursive algorithm faster, we need to reduce the number of recursive calls. In our multiply and conquer algorithm, we had four recursive calls corresponding to the four different terms of this sum. And the trick to reducing the number of recursive calls is the part of this algorithm that I find really clever but it's based on some really simple algebra, where here we've simply shown inequality by multiplying out terms. What's awesome here is that these four terms correspond to the four things that we were previously getting by recursive calls, and we can rearrange this equation to a form that only needs three recursive calls. All we've done here is move two of the terms to the other side, but this now gives us a formula for exactly the part inside the brackets here. And so instead of making recursive calls to compute these two quantities and adding them together, we could make recursive calls to compute these three quantities and add them together. But the awesome part is that we are already computing these two terms with our other two recursions. So, since we already need to make a recursive call to calculate this value and this value, we can simply make one recursive call where we first add xh plus xl, and we add yh plus yl, which gives us two numbers of roughly n over 2 bits, and then we can do a single size n over 2 multiplication to get this value and subtract off the values we already got, and so we're able to get all the things we need to compute xy using only three recursive calls. So let's use this new formula to rewrite our divide and conquer algorithm.
our new version of the algorithm still splits x and y in half and recursively multiplies n over 2 bit numbers, but now our third multiplication is taking the high and low order bits of x, adding them to each other, and giving that as the first input, doing the same with y for the second input, and recursively computing their product. Then when we get that result back, we subtract off the values that we got from the other two recursive calls to get the thing that previously took us an extra recursion. So when we do our running time analysis, much of it looks familiar, but this line, since we're adding n bit numbers to get both of the things that we pass in, it's doing both a recursive call and some work in the splitting up phase. And this last line is doing a few more addition operations, but still a linear total amount of work. So now we get a recurrence where we only have three size n over 2 subproblems. And when we solve this recurrence using the general formula from last time, we get big O of n to the log base 2 of 3. And since log base 2 of 3 is a little less than 1.6, We've now devised a divide and conquer multiplication algorithm that beats out grade school long multiplication.